Hello, hello. Welcome to the podcast. That's dope entertainment. My name is God's Will, and we got another recurring host, a good friend of the podcast, Sam. Hoping to see him around a lot more. How are you doing out there in Texas? Yep. Yep. Texas <laughs> is good. It's starting to finally like get cold. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't sound pretty good, actually. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad I'm not there right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I definitely miss. Uh, California winter, but I mean, making the best of it. Yeah, that's what's up. I I wanted to bring you on, uh, one to catch up because you know I feel like I've just been talking to a lot of random people, so I'm just like let's bring it back home. But then two, um, I feel like there's like a lot of good topics that are going on right now. Um, I mean we might talk about the actually yeah we used to talk about politics also you know i, I hadn't brought this up to okay. you right i know right i know right i was like hmm you know this nah fuck it sam's cool um yeah. and then what else there's of course kanye west interview that just came out um a few days ago right saturday yeah yeah it was like a three-hour podcast with joe rogan yeah and i think they were both pretty like hyped up about it i actually They're... liked it yeah i, yeah, liked I liked it a lot, lot. i mean yeah let's let's jump I'm into always... it nervous for kanye i feel like it's like my team going to play bro come on exactly yeah you know (laughs) because i I love kanye like it it sort of bumps me out that like so many people are like against him right now you know Mm -hmm. it feels like it i mean it's it's easy to dislike him yeah so i think maybe more people will put in the effort to you know consider yeah you know I'm hoping His so. Personality and different things. You know, I think yeah. Joe was the best for him, honestly. Like, I, I think, like, because one big scale, right? So many people are going to watch his interview, but it, it's more than that. I think Joe was like the most empathetic, you know? Like, because uh, honestly, think he's like a fan. Like, yeah. Like, legit, yeah, he, wants, was... he wants Kanye to win, you know? And, and so many of the people that, like, like us, we want him to win too. I love Kanye West. Yeah, right. Like, I would interview Kanye in the podcast. I would should... absolutely. Hey, bro, if I could, I would for sure. You know, but you know, at the same time, I've always loved Kanye West. You know, I've always wanted Kanye West to win because if he wins, I feel like it's good for the culture, really. You know, and I do feel like it. It does. Like you know, now I'm sounding like a bootlicker, I guess, right? But at the same time, I've always yeah, go ahead, people yeah. to to stand for. I yeah. think Kanye is the most reasonable <laughs> you know yeah. as far as Funny enough, like right? artists or yeah. politician figures that you could i don't know that's you know probably actually not what the public enough thinks. after like the podcast interview like don't get me wrong i don't want to become president yeah or anything you know right if he's serious about becoming uh like an elected officer i do want him to go like through the route but at the same time like i like i like him a lot because he's very genuine you know like and the sincerity i think is is absolutely crucial you know like uh especially like as we know like politics is such a corrupting force right and mm-hmm. only like the strongest willed people really can like make it out it seems right yeah yeah so i think yeah I, I more so than i think kanye is the perfect politician i think other politicians could be more like him oh yeah honestly honestly yeah, like i think i, I think we all of... like the sort of sincerity right yeah. like yeah. i do yeah uh, like he's just transparent he says exactly what he thinks and i think yeah. there's some issues with that as well of course even right. in the interview we can talk about that later but yeah right he's just he has no filter especially mm-hmm. when it comes to what he thinks he can do yeah so i i you know he sort of sounds like an anime character to me personally like where he's just like i believe i can do all these things and like he, he's like there, there were some things he said that like i thought were really good like where he's like I don't, i'm just a, a common person i'm a lay person i don't know the answers to this particular problem that like joe might have posed him right but yeah, at like the same time the, the opposite of the sway interview he's like he, i don't got the answers joe <laughs> there's stuff i don't know about you know like i i'm so glad that like he's like i'm going to like listen to people who do know you know which yeah. i think is what i'd want you know like i don't expect the president to know about everything but at the same time i do expect him to listen to people who are smart and knowledgeable about thing and to do something about that right you know you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah like where he i remember like uh the point where he brought up about like uh he changed his mind on um uh the the bio bio engineering farming type of deal right mm-hmm. like you remember like when he brought that up like where he was like oh I, I was talking to this person and this person explained to me like why uh this one term uh for farming or you know uh like bio 
engineered food or something like that, I guess, you know, like it yeah. changed his, he changed his mind because he talked to someone smart. I don't know if it was a good opinion or not. I, I don't remember the details about it, but I, I, I remember being blown away that he was actually like interested in listening to smarter individuals. Yeah. And I think that's like a really uh, important part of his evolution is that he went from this kind of abstract entertainment figure yeah to real stuff like concrete stuff mm. like literally concrete yeah yeah honestly thinking about food and building infrastructure food. right mm -hmm. yeah well, I, you so know i think i yeah. think that's great and like like this interview actually like made it made him more realistic to me in a way um yeah. although definitely like in a way like it sort of needs to be like reined in like i i hope that he has people like joe rogan on him on his side you know people are able mm -hmm. to like one stop him i love that uh, joe was able to like to stop him and just sort of be like okay let's bring it back to like one of these points in the past you know and right. then like also like joe was able to understand like how he thinks you know like i i guess i think he was able to translate like where he's like he's just going on like he, he changes tracks so quickly you know and yeah. it's, it's not like they don't make sense it's just more like here's an abstract connection to these two thoughts right at least that's how i feel w what about you i think it was like like Kanye's like a rally driver mm -hmm. and then Joe was like the guy in the, in the passenger seat saying, uh -huh. you know, there's a hard left turn. We got to take you. Uh -huh. <laughs> there's a right turn coming up. Yeah, yeah. He was spin or something. So. I, I agree with that. And he was, I think Joe had this thing where in the middle of it, whenever he asked about education, mm -hmm. he kind of had this moment where he's like, okay, well, I need to approach this, this part. Like he's an actual presidential candidate. Oh yeah. He's I remember, serious, yeah. You know, there's a chance that he can actually win. Yeah. Like, well, let me get my two cents in. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just in case yeah. <laughs> you end up doing it. Yeah, right. You take care of the education stuff. And I mean, his answers were honest. Like, he yeah. didn't know. Mm. Like, because he spends all this time doing these super detail oriented things and the things he does have control over. Yeah, exactly. Like his fashion, his music, um, yeah, his brand his as a whole. Company, right? Yeah. He's all these projects. And Madonna, I was curious right? what you thought about how much he mentioned God and his like super strong tie of faith in the interview in, in, in general. I think it's interesting. Um, and actually, I'm glad you asked that too, you know, like, um, like, cause like I, I felt a little, I liked it. I actually liked it, but at the same time I was like, all right, there's a way to say it. So it doesn't like, worry people i guess you know i think right now especially like um right now like in political culture like we have to think about like what bringing up god means you know like um it, it sort of is tied to like political ties right and even like the sort of like it makes me think of christopher columbus in a way right like where it, like you know if you bring up christopher columbus you have to sort of be like disclaimer right you have to be like we understand what Christopher Columbus did before unless you bring it up in a political manner. Right. Same thing with God, where it's like, I was proud of him for doing it, but I think it's off putting to people who are not ready yet to sort of hear what he's saying. Right. I think you have to be like, I think he has to be like, I understand like how God maybe scares you right now. You know, like it is not, it's not an easy thing to talk about God in a public discord or, and to be like God only can scare people off if you want them to hear your message um yeah. so yeah that's that uh, so that's but i think it was great that joe let him speak about god and just sort of explain like what he felt and thought because i think he has very sincere um he's very sincere like I, the, the thing about Kanye is he's very honest but i don't think he's the most tactful when trying to get like a large net of people right you know uh, at least the like there's definitely his fans we're fans but i don't think that like he's going to be able to capture the hearts of a lot of america right you know like they just see him as a scary black guy like who you know <laughs> you know like or you know like they, they they're they not taking the time to try to understand what he's saying you know they listen to the first 10 seconds and take it out of context right so overall the whole the whole thing is like i like that like he's very much about god but i think he's going to scare a lot of people off if he's not a little more tactful about it which I, you know in ways as some funny enough it's like i'm talking like i want him to win and i guess i do i, I think i want of him course. to if anything if not win i want him to be a, a larger part of the political discourse like for him to like educate himself and then also for him to say his mind and then hopefully like it's like really like he's asking the questions that are like the society is scared to ask you know what i mean yeah yeah so i think, I think yeah sorry go ahead mm -hmm. 
you're dead on with the, you know, how if you bring God in the conversation, you can instantly tune a lot of people off. Yeah. Like they have this switch where like, oh, I heard God. Oh, God. Like, no. uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, God. You yeah, know? Exactly. But maybe they're ready for that with Kanye. Like they've, you know, heard a lot about his, uh, you know, recent conversion change of heart sorts. with yeah. respect to different things. But you know, I think, also, I think we, we want to see more actions from him, too. Like, I think it's going to be like, okay, if you're really about God, you know, because we've seen a few things so far, right? It's still brand new. So, and because everyone's like, oh, Kanye is off his meds or yada, 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 you know, like they already don't take him seriously. I think it's going to be more consistent actions that show that show that like he's really devoted to God, like in this way, especially in a way that makes sense in the modern ma manner. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I think, I mean, he has the ability to do that, too. I think so. Like he's a doer. He just, he's been doing stuff. Exactly. Because he's been talking for so long, and the world's been saying, you're, just, you're all talk. And then now he's been all action for, yeah. like, the past few years. And I think being, there was one quote, I wish I had it pulled up. But he just, I think, he takes criticism very seriously. Yeah. Yeah, So he being does. such a public figure by you know raising the stakes on his career yeah as a potential president i think that's gonna just push him forward yeah i think so like i that's why i'm hoping that he has guys like joe rogan around because i think like he has one the energy to go about it right like he's very sincere and passionate about it like i, I like what he said like in early on like where it's like the u.s needs like real leadership in a way you know like to really inspire people like that right mm -hmm. and like, I, I think, like, he's dead on about that. I think that, like, uh, there was a lot of goodness in this interview. And I'm glad that you even egged me on to, like, watch it, too. Um, you know, like, even as a Kanye fan, is like, I, I don't know if I would have taken it as seriously, you know, especially, it's like... big time commitment. Yeah, it won well, three hours. But, like, it was a very good... And also, like, well, I had to do it in chunks for sure. But not because of, like, the length of it, because it's just... Kanye it's is just saying so exactly it's dense. It's like, pack. he's packing, he's like, just this idea and this idea and this idea and then and then i love that joe slows it down every now and then because like kanye just goes on so many tangents and it is it can be honestly a little exhausting to sort of but i think it's worthwhile to go on all these things yeah definitely he does these stream of consciousness moments where he just references stuff and i think that's kind of where he loses some people yeah absolutely um, especially whenever he goes out of his comfort zone like, yeah some stuff that he's really well versed in mm -hmm. and he'll mention like physics or something and then the physics people are like, wait, what are you talking about? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there were some some iffy things he said. You know, I'm just like, mm, should we stop him on this? But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like a button. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like there there was quite a few times where I was just sort of like, dang it, Kanye, you can't say things like that. But I love that Joe had the patience just to sort of. I, there there's some times I felt like Joe was gonna stop him because he was like, there, and there were some times I was actually shocked that Joe stopped him um you know like where like he he was like well let me clar clarify some things here you know and i was like wow go joe that was the most tactful time you know joe is honestly like a master i don't understand the hate that joe gets like I, it bumps me out i think it bumps me out he takes a stance on a few things that are not popular to take a, his stance on you know i guess I mean? so it, although at the same time like i agree like for me is like i think because Okay, let me let me let me back it up because like there's a video I saw today that like blew me away. Um, it, it, like it, it makes me angry that it blew me away in a way because it, it was because it, it sort of reminds me of like what the camp I'm in is, you know, like the sort of liberal camp I am in, you know, like um, yeah. like I'm in the echo chamber of liberal people like on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, pretty much, right, yeah. and um even reddit too i guess you know like who i follow and all right and you know i think like we think that the internet is like so much bigger than it is right you know you cancel somebody and that's gonna do world changing things we want the revolution the the, the video i saw today was by contrapoints all right contrapoints uh, like this this white lady like like such a like i like her vibe or a lot but like she's like this liberal who is calling out what liberals would complain about like like oh i don't want to vote for joe biden right and right. um she was coming up with the counterpoint like of like what people would say against her you know like where oh, i don't want to vote for joe biden because he's not socialist enough like well you know you got to get out the the 
the stronger evil right you know and like and she was just like hammering but you know like one of the final points that she made was like oh but you know the left wants the revolution but it's like well what does revolution really mean to you you know um you know like does it mean getting weapons because are you doing that are you training the right's doing that you know like they have militias they have connections with the police force you know they have connections with the army um whereas you know the left is just sort of talking about it right and like well, there's i mean i think the the riots to an extent were kind of a show of force yeah oh absolutely from the left yeah yeah absolutely but you know like I and mean, the left is constantly trying to you know the left i don't think has like an idea of the scale of what's happening right they don't have an idea of like one who's on their side two um how to get people on their side you know whereas the right you know is easy like knows how to manipulate the heart a lot better right they know how to go after people and like get people like in their tribe you know they know how to make a tribe a lot better i think so back to the original think, point sorry i like this is a super quick. long wind yeah go ahead yeah, yeah. No, i'm following you though. yeah okay i cool, think cool. it's been a little bit too much of an emotional yeah and like moral uh tie between politics and uh you know people yeah i listened to this podcast today that was about um, if I were to ask you, would you be upset if your uh, son or daughter married someone from the other political party? Mm. Um, mm. What would you say? And like the vast majority of people said, yes, yeah. I'd be upset. Uh -huh. And they rephrase the question. Uh, but what if the person didn't talk about politics all the time? What if they weren't annoying? <laughs> and everyone was fine with it. Uh -huh. Like It's just whenever you ask somebody, you know, if you introduce someone, like let's say I walk up to a you know mutual friend or a future mutual friend, mm -hmm. I say this is Goswell. You know he's pretty left, he's a liberal guy. <laughs> They're gonna yeah, think right. that that's I'm big that's part of my your whole personality, personality right? Yeah, yeah it's exactly. Like if I were to introduce you as a cat person, they'd be like, oh, this guy's he's 100 percent cats. He's just got like ten of them. Yeah, that's Which a good point. Yeah, hey, um, right. Like, like right. Sure. it's like is that like your only personality? Are you multifaceted type of person? Uh, in you're very right like where's like right now i think it's just a little bit too it's a little bit too um uh what, what's the word you know like, polarized. like yeah polarized exactly that you know like and yeah. unfortunately i think it's gonna be until at least december you know like oh yeah, yeah. are you getting te like spam text luckily no like I you know am, yeah. yeah it's terrible uh, you know the funny thing is that like i donated you know like i I, the funny thing is like i was ready to you know be like yeah but everything calmed down in fact the funny thing is like uh the biden camp texted me did you vote and i was like yeah i did and they're like cool and then was, they left me only having nothing you know so i'm huh. i'm happy about it although i do get a lot of spam calls but it's yeah. different <laughs> i filtered that on my my phone so smart, smart. Oh, i'll tell you how i mean it's pretty pretty nice that's pretty cool i'm thinking about but, getting a new phone right now i want to get iphone like although like i'm thinking about sticking with iphone do you have an iphone no yeah. you do oh iPhone. yeah okay cool. i mean i got macbook uh apple watch AirPods. i mean oh, smart it's, man uh, you know i don't know why i did <laughs> put yeah free sold on it but. two and two okay good i, I felt like i got a you're an well. android okay yeah. good and i had an android before i mean i'm pretty comfortable with both All it right. was just that apple phone was such a good deal honestly you, i'm thinking about getting an iphone 11 you think that's a good idea? I have a seven. How many right now. generations old is that? I don't follow the newest. I don't know, man. Twelve is the new one that's coming out. So mm -hmm. eleven, I think, is last year. But it doesn't have any yeah. buttons on it. So that's the thing that scares me. But you know, that's <laughs> I you know, it's, it sort of makes me think about like um just overall, like I wonder how many people have iPhones. I got like a just like of... it's close to like like forty forty or something. Wow. Between iPhone and Android. Okay. Well, okay. I guess I'm going to stick with iPhone then. The next thing I didn't want to talk to you about, um, Dark Souls and all that. Oh, my gosh. So the start started Straight off. From politics. I know, right? We'll, we'll get back into politics, I guess, like in a bit, like when it, I guess it feels natural. But, yeah. you know, also I'm glad. To, I'm just glad to have like a friend on because just sort of like, let's just have a talk as if we were just normally you know, just sitting with each other and just chilling, I guess, right? A lot of stuff is going on. I feel like it's it's nice to process it, to talk out loud. You know, yeah. honestly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I appreciate you asking me questions, too. That was a great, like, that one question about God. I was like, whew, hold on. Yeah, I, and that's something that we share. Yeah. So I think it's, like, it's cool to be able to talk to someone about, you know, yeah. how 
they're perceived. Oh, no, no. Yeah, I'm happy about that. I'm like, that is a fire question, sir. I, I like that. So Dark Souls, the reason why I want to bring up Dark Souls, um, one, I'm playing Bloodborne, all right? Bloodborne is this horror horror game like where you're just like you're, you're for some reason like on a hunt like there's like this giant purge that's happening or something like that but then there's these all these freaking monsters out there and the game is stupidly hard like you know everything can pretty much kill you in like one hit um you know i'm level 70 you know like a lot of things can still kill me in one hit <laughs> you know um mm -hmm. but like it is such a fun game but um you know, I'm like, and I'm creeped out because like I'm playing it every day, and it's like it's just like this horror mentality. I'll, I'll make a clip of this. I got to make a clip of this because yeah. like, yeah, like it's just such a bizarre looking game. Like I just fought this one monster that like does this weird thing that called frenzy. Like where if you're in its vicinity, uh, it makes you crazy, and then you lose a lot of health immediately unless you like take sedative. Yeah, and then like it grabs you and then it eats you. Like it's it looks like Cthulhu Cthulhu type of deal. I don't know. It's oh. and, like it is like I just now I'm starting to feel the horror in this of this game. Like I'm like oh I hate looking at these things. But <laughs> but yeah, um, I, think, I mean we played Demon Souls. Like, yeah. Oh man. On, uh, yeah, long you ago, almost beat like, my demon souls, which I, yeah, I, I was like, no, the last day. I didn't oh know. no, mm -mm. <laughs> like I was like, I gotta do something, <laughs> but you know, I, just um, for uh, for context, real quick, mm -hmm. the whole like Soulsborne series, as they say, it's a uh, it's really critically acclaimed, like yeah. all kinds of awards. Oh yeah, no, I see you guys praise. hyped up about it all the time, and it is dope. I mean, in fact, if it wasn't for you and Zlatan, I don't think I would have liked this game as much. Yeah, and it's like I don't know. It's it's a it's a different flavor of gaming. A lot of stuff, you know, is similar to it before and after. It didn't invent the ideas that mm -hmm. it uses, but I think it's like a really high stakes. You know, like there's no difficulty chooser. There's no tutorial. Yeah, <laughs> you don't you don't know about the lore. You have like one cutscene oh, yeah. every like you know twenty hours of gameplay. Oh, honestly, <laughs> yeah. Like, what is it about the game that like? draws you in and then because also it's such a difficult game i mean like like i said so many things can just one shot you and then like oh you gotta start over you gotta get yeah. back to where you were oh you just died again you lost all your money so you know your currency um, yeah yeah i get the, the like, dollars what is it about dark souls and the souls games and also what's your favorite one too actually i like the original dark soul just because i have the strongest connection to it uh, i played it on the laptop with WASD for uh -huh. the movement uh -huh. and IJKL for the camera. <laughs> oh wow! And it was like control no to attack and stuff. It was, it was terrible. That sounds so but, hard. Yeah, I, was I like, loved well, it. I mean, it was still fun. Wow, that's tough. I, I mean, like that's the thing is like you say fun, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I know like most people would be like, no, like I I remember telling my like one of my other best friends about it. He's like, I play games to have fun, not to be challenged, you know. And right. it was just sort of like why. Why is it that we enjoy this sort of, like, I think of it as masochistic. You don't even see it as masochistic. You're just sort of like, I got this. It, it's a competitive thing. I where see. if you play a single player game and it's super easy, then you're kind of just watching a movie. <laughs> like a better version yeah. of a movie. Uh -huh, that's a good but point. This is like, I think what makes it special is the skill cap is high. There's and there's rewards cap? for for having skill like as a player oh yeah yeah okay cool cool that's so, like, like you watch a, a speed run and someone can be naked with the starting weapon yeah and still 1v1 you know the hardest enemies in the game that's quickly. true man so i think like their ability to kill you is really close to your ability to kill them and i think that one-to-one -one ratio is really powerful in the game because that's how it is kind of like in real life huh. you, one of my favorite games i think i talked about it on our previous podcast it's hotline miami yeah, 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 yeah. You're just, you're just a, uh, you know, as likely to kill the guy as he is to kill you unless you're faster. Like that one's just like one hit, like run through as quick as possible, bing, 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 right? Yeah, like, yeah. Go along bing with bong, the music, bing right? Bong, yeah, bing, bong, bing, bong, bing, <laughs> bong. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's like a, what's that director? Tarantino as. Mm -hmm. I think both of them are kind of like that, where yeah. you see the good guys and they're just as likely to die as the bad guys. Oh. You know, in the in the bunker or whatever. That's so. a good point, actually, huh? I, I guess I never thought, you know, usually when you play video games, it's like, oh, I'm supposed to be stronger than the bad guys. But at the same time, I guess you're right, especially like when you play games on the higher difficulties all the time. You're, we in fact, weaker than just even the normal guys, right? Yeah, I think one cool thing about video games is that as a player, 
you have this huge advantage of being able to do it over and over. Mm. It's like, uh, you know, day after, not day after tomorrow. It's the one with Tom Cruise. Uh, the one with Tom Cruise, right? Um, what is that one called? Crap. Something tomorrow. Yeah, isn't it? The, uh, let me check it. Yeah, but like that movie. Yeah, because exactly. That's that movie. Um, it was very kind of gaming feeling. It really did. Um, game. And that blonde lady that's married to. Edge Hawks. of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. Like I, I saw it on a plane like last Same. year. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, right. That's where actually where I would watch a lot of my movies because I'm just like I don't, I I thought I was going to movies enough, but apparently not. But I prefer like audio usually, and I think games are just so much more immersive. Huh? It's yeah. Becoming, I think the dominant medium, like it's the peak. I know we talked about this before. Like but... for society as a whole, I guess, or yeah, like the biggest budget entertainment mm-hmm. is games. That's a good point. You know, the most hours you spent watching games, not watching movies. I would say, especially so, like now, at least like there's like an upward tick for sure, especially during Corona time, right? Like, pe- like everyone kept talking about like Animal Crossing, right? And then um, talked about Among um, yeah, Among Us and Fall, Fall Guys, Guys um, and then just even like the big titles now. I mean, like how Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk just got delayed. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, like 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 which is. Yeah, at least, for me, at least I don't take so much umbrage at that. You know, it's not like they sent it to next year. It's just a few, uh, like right. two weeks later, right? Three weeks later. Yeah. As someone who's how do you, how do you feel about that? I can, I can empathize with them. Okay. <laughs> if yeah. you've ever had a deadline, you're like, all right. Yeah. Minus three weeks is fine. That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, I, I rather that they do it right versus, oh, this game isn't as great because it has too many bugs or whatever the heck, right? Yeah. Now that's like, for me, I, I like, I don't know. I, I think I'll, I like do you do you get a perspective I guess of like the people who are mad about it I guess so I think I mean they were promised something yeah that's true it. that's a good point if they pre-ordered it they bought something and get it, it that's promised. true for me I guess I'm There's just a... so behind on my video games that I'm just like cool fine I get to breathe this a little bit longer right <laughs> you know and people would like take work off for like a week after release uh, yeah that's <laughs> so a good that, point I don't know why you would do that yeah I know it's, right? it's just been delayed already no you're right that's a good point like I wouldn't schedule to have the day off. I'm gonna wait, you know, wait at least wait until like the, the deadline of when I can put my time in, right? To see like if it's if it's good or not, or take a sick day. Not that I would ever do such a thing. <laughs> I mean, everyone's in the gaming industry at least is planning for their employees to be sick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, honestly, man, and that's gonna be like, a tight game. What do you what do you think about that? Are you gonna get that game? I mean, I've- I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I built my new computer. I'm ready to Ooh. load it up whenever. Ooh, is it multiplayer at all? I don't think so. I think it's mainly single player. Okay, I mean that's tight. It's streamable. I mean, if you want to. I should start streaming again. You want? How about me and you stream? Is that like a way? Is there a possibility about that? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You can do that. Sounds pretty. Cool. I mean, like we did with uh, what was the Amazon delivery game? Amazon delivery. Oh, oh, but Death Stranding. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, I don't know why I stopped streaming. Um, I don't know. I just felt lazy, like, um, because I felt like I have to be on, and also like, yeah, I don't know. I just felt lazy. I, I you know what? I need to get yeah. back on it. Yeah, there's, there's no real reason that like I, I, I haven't streamed video games. I think the hardest skill in streaming is just talking to yourself. Yeah. And the occasional, you know, text chat because it's yeah. so like sporadic uh, until you're big. Yeah, exactly. And then once you're big, then it's just too much, and you can't even keep up with i mean they get like this crazy text filter where they only read certain stuff Uh, and like read the first three words and they'll know what the rest of it says wow Uh, i think they get a certain skill set that's very specific and not very useful anywhere else (laughs) (laughs) yeah right i guess like unless like where else are you reading like super fast text i guess right and it's like not even comprehensive it's just scanning but i mean it's useful for streaming for sure yeah although I guess I, I'm hoping to have like skills that work in one field that can be, but then again, I, I guess you never know how life goes, right? Just, yeah, it could be the future. There's a lot of stuff like this yeah. where, you know, fast text doing work <laughs> is being streamed to a bunch of randoms and they're like giving you feedback and it uh-huh. helps. I don't know. Uh, uh-huh. man. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder how the future will go, but then again, I don't even know how next week's going to go. Two weeks from now. Let's get back into politics, yeah. I guess, right? <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, right? So, I like the segue. All right. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm working on it. But politics, how do you feel? 
about politics right now? I think it's like we're all getting screwed, hundred <laughs> percent, and nobody likes it. Uh-huh. Like, nobody's happy. Yeah. If you ask them, you know, to review their internet service, no one's going to say it's great. If you're asking to review their government, everyone's going to say it's terrible. It's like they have a lower. You think like the whole world? Than- or you mean like just America, right? I think, especially here, yeah. it's so obvious. Mm-hmm. But if you look at somewhere else, like, I mean, even like name the best government in the world. Like, what's the best system? Probably still garbage. I mean, if we're being honest. Like, you talk about uh, Norway, and they're kind of like, they're kind of cheating because they have tons of money. But, I was like, you know, I, mean, I hear about the Scandinavian system. places. Like, it sounds pretty good. I mean, even like some of the Asian places sound pretty good. Singapore? Yeah. Yeah. Singapore. Japan? Yeah. But so there's, South Korea, maybe I know they have problems, but yeah, you know that's I mean, not their fault. There's everywhere, though. That's true. And I think the best system hasn't been invented yet, mm. and we're all kind of upset until it is. <laughs> I like that, though. I like that. Like I do have hope that it can happen here. I have hope that it can happen. The system, I think people are primed now. You know, before yeah. like there was no uh, consciousness of politics really, and mm. it's only because of like this sort of blatant screwing i guess and then also like just so many things happening right now um one you know information you know we get to have so much more information than ever before right, right. um and then also i guess like even like the 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 amount the number of groups are like willing to sort of filter it in a way right one way or another fox news to like john oliver and late night tv snl right uh social media like is all like willing to like sort of filter down a lot of this news so it is, it is more consumable in a way right at least that's why right. I think. And they did a ton of research on the access to the internet and mm-hmm. how that affects their approval rate of the government like, across the world oh wow and it's always inversely proportional if they have more access they really dislike the government yeah <laughs> and we have a lot of access yeah and if there's like a dictatorship where they're restricted then that kind of it lowers the relationship. Wow. So, I mean, it, it makes sense. I mean, like, if you know your world sucks, then you're going to be like, well, it's, I'm mad, right? If, you, if you're yeah. just like, it is what it is, and, like, you don't even know, like, there's something better. I mean, because I would hate to be, like, a North Korean to know that, like, there's something better, like, on the other side side that you know the 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 bad fence that they told me not to go towards right <laughs> you know yeah. it's like wait what or like china I mean, yeah exactly just... oh man then again that's i think that's what sucks about like sort of like hong kong right like where mm-hmm. those guys mm-hmm. enjoyed freedom and then it seems like it's got scaled back now right yeah man. i think it's gonna be a time where we look back in history and think you know what happened for china to get in the position that they are in the future yeah i hope and so because hopefully it's like you know a uh, it's a world where you know we, we can make a lot of progress together yeah but i, I hope feel so. like there's, there's this narrative of a uh, second cold war kind of being pushed mm. uh, by both politics uh you know parties in the u.s yeah it feels like it i'm like is that it's really not... just the the inevitable thing that's supposed to happen that we're supposed to fight china but or something like that you know like or yeah, like economically like... or even physically it's like the uh, common enemy type of narrative where, mm-hmm. you know, well, these guys are with China. And then they're like, no, you're, you guys are with China. <laughs> when it used to be Russia, it used to be. Uh, yeah. Just know. change the name, I guess, like of uh, exactly. the bad guy, which mm-hmm. sort of sucks. I'm like, do we need the bad guy? But then again, I guess the, the, the people who have, who are bankrolling off of that, right? They need that, right? Yeah. And there is stuff that's evidence that makes China look kind of like the bad guy. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. I, I, I was just thinking about it. I was like, you know, there was a time that, like, we loved China, right? I, I would say, at least I did. You know, I think about, like, Jackie Chan and, uh, you know, like, movies like Hidden Tiger, Crouching Dragon, right? And I was like, yeah, oh, I, I mean, like, China has, like, the people. Like, yeah, the people, country, like, yeah, they're super cool, right? But I guess that was, I guess, yeah, that's all I knew. The people, like, in the culture, like, oh, I love Chinese food. But now it's like, oh, the government. Uh, yeah, it's like, it's not even the entire government. It's the party. Yeah. The one communist party. I think Man. that's what people have a gripe with around the world about the U.S. is the two parties. Mm. You know? That's true. I think the closer you are to, to one, the, the worse it is. I do so. hope that, like, what I'm hoping is that, like, if Biden gets in, then we can, like, have 
the starting changes, right? You know, like the multiple, um, the multiple party system, or like getting rid of the electoral college, or um, you know, starting to move towards more of like the the utopia that we're hoping for you know of course uh, you know like yeah there's no such thing as a utopia but hey why not get close right of course there's always gonna yeah, be bad more things perfect. yeah exactly i think like we have like so many ways we can go for that i i think that's what is always sort of bummer like where it's like why don't we start somewhere you know like i i think that's why like i i, I get bummed with the deflections you know like mm-hmm. where it's like oh what about the homeless vets okay let's do something for them right like i i'm down for if, if that's if that somewhere to start all right, cool. Let's make sure that no ho- no vet has to go homeless again. All right. Yeah, I you think know, there's like, a lot of issues like that where I kind of take the Kanye approach, where you know we'll approach that when we get to it. I'm sure there's a smart person who has been studying this for a long time. That can absolutely. Help. I you know I think, I think right now also I'm afraid because it's like we're not longer we're no longer like in the information age, right? Like, or are, are we? Maybe. Do you think that like, there's a way that like leadership can get back to like trusting smart people? Yeah, you know, I think so. I think the common per- person, like, even though they're kind of portrayed as being like a below average intelligence, I think the mm-hmm. common person has common sense. Yeah. They're average smart. That's so true. I don't think they're going to make these super dumb mistakes that you see shown, uh, you know, on media and stuff like that. That's a good point. Mm, that's it, a good and One thing about whenever you're talking about uh, the change that could happen mm-hmm. if Biden was elected. I think one big thing about current politics is that the two parties here, there's only two, so they have to include a lot of different ideas. Yeah, a lot, a lot more. of different sub parties. Mm-hmm. I think there's some interplay between those, like we saw in the primaries. Mm-hmm. And I think they have to make a lot of negotiations and kind of compromises kind of settle with each other. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I guess something so I, I do hope for. It's going to be just Biden's agenda being pushed. Yeah, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I, mean, I would like more parties, honestly. I mean, because the Democratic Party is not like a whole happy family right is moderates progressives and then like even like more so uh communists and socialists you know and what does that even mean in a way right right Right. and then like the right you know has its own moderation to extremism too right and it sort of sucks that like it's like one or the other right now right but then again right now it has to be that hopefully like after this we can move on past that right maybe yeah, it's one of these things where if you set up the rules for, of a game to be easily exploitable, then they're going to be exploitable. Mm-hmm. Like the, yeah. the framers of the Constitution kind of knew that there was this exploit, and then turns <laughs> out we got it within like five years or something. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right. And again, I don't blame them. You know, like I think yeah, to I put know. so much on them, I'm like, I think they did a good job of what they had and knew at the moment. And it was it's good just, for a long time. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> like it's just so good. But who is fee on us for not changing it up, you know, like or like updating it for it so it fits with the modern times, right? right. But whatever. Where I, th- I hope because like don't get me wrong, I don't want to like do. I think also that's the other thing about like especially like the liberal camp, um, bums me out with like where it's like they're wanting to throw away, throw out everything old, and it's just like no, hold on, chill out. Now one, you're scaring a lot of people. Two, <laughs> you can't do that. Like you know, like they. That the ContraPoints video just like it's sort of like, even though I knew this, I guess, or maybe I didn't, I don't know, but like the echo chamber, you know, is so loud. You know, like it's not like indicative of what the United States really is like, right? Like, or just normal common person, right? The average person with, you know, like the average hopes, right? Um, yeah. They're not worried about who's got canceled. They're worried about like their families and such, right? Exactly. Like the average person, there's a quote from Ice Cube. I saw recently. My parents were watching the news. I'm like, oh. I say which one. Uh-huh. But he said, uh, <laughs> no matter who the president is, you're still gonna have to get up in the morning and go to work. Facts. Think, yeah. That's the average American. Honestly, but you know, the parties I think right now are like, you know, you signed up for this, so now here's your outfit, and here's the list of beliefs that you have to spout yeah. out, and then here's mm-hmm. the counterpoints to those that you're gonna memorize and you know get to it. Yeah, so exactly. Like, I don't think that's how anyone wants to be treated Mm-mm. as a yeah. voter or as a citizen yeah so it's but gonna change i feel like in our our generation i i really do hope so i one thing i keep saying about like the millennial generation i really like that we were like the last group and the first group you know like we're the last mm-hmm. group we're like just sort of hey here's the normal outdoors and you know before of course night the 2000s right i mean right. Hell, we did, like we didn't really have helicopter parents thank god 
like at least i hope not yeah yeah it, it, was, it was right it was after transition this. age yeah and i'm glad that we got to live before that you know like go outside and don't have to like really fear about like what's happening outside but same time we get technology uh globalism uh and for me there was an optimism i i I felt optimistic about like the future, you know, like I watching Jetsons and uh, thinking about anime and just, you know, like I, I actually felt pretty optimistic. Video games are like, like cutting edge graphics. I like when I think about like 2000s, it was always like graphics and how computers were always getting better. And yeah. it was just sort of like, wow, if this is getting better, I think we as society can get better. Maybe I don't know. You know, like it. it just yeah, I mean, that's a really good comparison to draw. If you're yeah. a kid, especially, like, yeah. hey, this is getting better every year. And that's yeah. going to be way in the future. Yeah. Exactly. You know, like there was I, this. It's kind of unrelated, but me and Chris were talking about this game he played on PS2. Yeah. And there's this graphics upscaling tech now. Uh huh. I think we PS2. do it in our heads whenever <laughs> we think back to old uh -huh. games. Uh huh. It looks like super HD in your head. Yeah, like and I said, like, I, it, like oh, oof, it's it might, blocky. <laughs> I was just thinking about it. I was like, oh, Rash and Clank, that looks like, oh, and I'm like, oh, that was a long time ago, honestly, right? <laughs> Jack and yeah, Daxter. Filling the gaps with, you know, your it's memory. Your <laughs> right. Play some SNES game, right? Eesh. Oh, yeah. But, you know, but, like, oh, it's so smooth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, oh, like, absolutely. How many frames per second faster? God, I'm thinking about it. Did you did you play SNES games? Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. That was uh, my first console. I All right, Mario cool. I Bros. thought you were like always PC. <laughs> no, I got a PC whenever I was in middle school. Middle school. Like late middle school. I got a laptop. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. But before that, yeah. My brother actually got an SNES uh, recently. Ooh. We went back and played Mario Brothers, you know, with the Luigi and Ooh. <laughs> Battletoads. Ooh. Uh, the Double Dragons game. It was fun. Those games must be super was... stupid hard. To go through right now right yeah there's so many like training wheels that you expect that are gone oh like, you can just you can just die or we can punch each other like, yeah oh really scroller really yeah. punch each other can punch yeah family you can, like, like, you do a combo friendly you're, fires like, this on. Big on the screen yeah like, that's why i'm big. like yo you can hit each other it's like oh <laughs> no 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 like i because i never played bad toads you know i've always heard about how hard especially like the um like the car or a bike or a skateboard uh, level yeah. was, but mm -hmm. I never knew about that part. That's dumb. I yeah. think you can turn it off, but it's not really the same. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little too easy. Damn. Man, this game, games back in the day, I, like the game I was thinking in my head that was just like impossible to beat and I think would be like worse to beat now would be Lion King and Jungle Book. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> those games were the stupid Disney. hard. Yes, the oh. Disney games were really hard. Like they, they didn't make anything easy. It was just yeah, like there's no reason to. No, yeah, I know, right? Just keep playing it. Yeah, yeah, it's true, right? But I just never beat those games, and then I tried them a few years ago. Yeah, huh? you I think say? they're based on like the coin operated style. Oh, like the arcade, yeah, like where they had to. Hard. Yeah, because yeah. I guess yeah, like with the continue, right? And you lose mm -hmm. your lives, and it's just sort of like, well, what's the point of losing lives? But then again, there was that fear because if you lose your lives, then you have to start all the the whole game over. Remember that? Yeah, it was like the ultimate uh, high stakes. If oh. you're at an arcade. You lose oh. your life, you can't play anymore. Like, Man, you it's over. <laughs> do you miss going to arcades like that? Like in a way, like I, I I'm glad they have like this new. Um, although I miss arcades as a whole, but yeah. I'm glad that they updated like their their payment. You know, like where it's like pay twenty dollars and you get to play all the games or whatever, right? Or ten dollars to yeah. play all the games. And here's some alcohol, and it's like yay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, one thing I, I think I want to also say about like our generation, I'm really happy that like a lot is is catering to our generation i think you know like you think about oh yeah like, it's like a, it's way shifted to us i'm I so happy i started seeing it a few years ago and now it's like okay you guys have the money now we, yeah we yeah <laughs> i know right like in a way i'm like okay chill out or I'm, I'm a little mad that they don't really they haven't like really captured the fire yet it feels a little insincere you know what i mean right yeah like i mean i think like our generations you know in the advertising firms they're in yeah. the you know design firms but we're not the, not the creators, yeah, the huh? senior leadership yet. I see. Oh, that's a good point. So, I'm glad to be like, I guess, like, oh, like aware of, I guess, right? But like, just sort of mm -hmm. disappointed that like they don't know how to do it yet. You know, like it doesn't feel as real. Like they, they're missing that soul. Like I think about like the Lion King movie. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's just sort of like I did. Like I was so hyped for it, but I didn't even see it. I haven't seen any of these uh, live action remakes. Have you seen any of them? 
I saw the Mulan movie. Oh, you saw that one? No, I didn't like because you watched it on purpose. There was a, a, you know, a stream that was watching it. Like, whoa, 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 it wasn't me, man. Yeah, yeah it wasn't on purpose. I just see you watch it. Oh, uh, damn, I guess I'll watch, right? But what'd but, you think, actually? What'd you think? They, oh, man, it was, it was rough. That's why they I removed all the magic. They just like, you know what? Everything that was good about it, we're going to take it out. There's no more dragon. There's no more, you know, no. Kumatana, whatever. No. <laughs> and, <laughs> no more and, Kumatana. Like all of the stuff that was special about Mulan, mm -hmm. they just took it away and made her Neo for no reason. They're like, you oh. know what? You're, you're born with this magic power, and that's the only thing that's good about you. Magic power? Like, wow. Yeah, like uh, Chi. Yeah, yeah, because like, you know, like, yeah, she didn't have that before. She was a normal person who was just like, hey, what if I think about, you know, she was she was a goofball who used her goofball powers, not even goofball. Like goofball is like, like the wrong connotation. Like it, it, right. it, she just thought outside the box. She thought differently than like what exactly. her peers thought. Which Man. is what people, you know, should be inspired to do, especially I uh, love you know, whenever that was made. 1990s, was kind of, eight or seven, yeah. Yeah. Man. yeah. That was like the idea is that, you know, we want people to think different. We want people to invent. But this was more like China driven, where it's like, <laughs> you know what? Most people fall in a place, but this there's one exception because she was already determined to be this way. Damn. So, you know, don't <laughs> don't, don't worry about, about her. too she's high, special. right? <laughs> she's special. You'll know you're special. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell you. We'll find oh. you. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Damn, that sucks in a way. I'm mean, not in a way, it sucks overall because I think there's a lot of hope for this movie too, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it was big budget, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, at least you didn't pay for the movie. I'm happy for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, like it, it, it's like it feels soulless. I remember the hype for the Lion King remake, and I didn't even watch it because I heard so many bad reviews. People were just like, "What's the point? Just go watch the original, right?" right. I heard Beyonce wasn't a good actress. It's just sort of like, damn, that's sure, the. Oh well, because I think you're competing, not only with the actual movie that existed yeah but people's you know expectations hindsight, nostalgic uh, glasses. that's true and like can you really because they got uh, i guess because also like these writers i feel like maybe disney writers don't know what they're doing uh, these days i don't know they don't yeah i mean they're that agenda I think is yeah mm -hmm. they're trying to push an agenda they think you know i believe these things so now everyone else is gonna believe them because i'm a writer i'm just of like y'all chill you know like yeah. i don't even mind like for me it's like who sh probably should be like yeah push that message you know probably <laughs> should be right not at all i'm like y'all like can you guys get back to telling like good stories again you know this is the reason yeah. why we we love disney we, we never really cared what the message was it was the fact that they made the message like so great and then like the message like really stuck it was cemented you know like so much more uh subconsciously too because it was just a good story that engrossed you right yeah, it like made you buy in. Yeah, and I and think uh, it was subtle too. Yeah, absolutely. I think one good thing that Disney has done is the Mandalorian. I really liked. Yeah, yeah, me too. I feel like that's one of the only good products that's still Disney related, huh? Because there's stuff that's not, you know, necessarily just Star forced Wars in your face. Yeah, it's yeah. like there's stuff you don't know, and that's fine. Yeah, you know, and this guy, it's just like a almost like a western where he's walking around just doing quests yeah i guess space cowboy shit money. yeah exactly yeah. right that's, that's a good no, point like, overwhelming like fight against evil it's mm -hmm. just like this mercenary doing his, his job i like that a lot i like that a lot like i, I think you, you're putting it uh the best way because mandalorian was like a, a breath of fresh air like i was worried about it especially like as other shows were coming out at the same time like witcher um oh, yeah yeah witcher i i'm i'm hyped for season two for that um Same. and it's a similar thing where it, i think that's the kind of like modern hero people want <laughs> it's just like a average dude not average but yeah like, badass dude. guy yeah who, badass who guy. isn't op you know like who's doing right. his best right <laughs> yeah he's yeah. he's not like a you know a good guy or a bad guy he's just, yeah he's, he's trying he's very <laughs> yeah he's trying like even when he does good things it's misconstrued right but yeah. You know, nuance. There's nuance to these characters. I, I, I'm actually glad yeah. you say that. Sure. Boom. But that's, that's, I'm writing that down. And, you know, like, um, especially like when there's so many good TV shows out right now. All right. Have you seen The Boys? I've been hearing about it. I haven't. It's just such an investment to, yeah, I know. Sit I don't blame and watch you. TV. I don't blame you. I feel you. like I'm wasting the visuals if I don't look at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But you want to multitask, right? 
Right. Yeah. So I'll like play a game yeah. and then I'll listen to something. Mm-hmm. So I'm not wasting anything. Yes. It's like optimal. Yeah, that's how I feel too, funny enough. Like that's why I watch more YouTube stuff. And then yeah. although like unless it was like a very involved video essay, I guess it's just like video, 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 you know, but Otherwise, yeah, let me just listen to people talk while I play a game. I think I, I want to multitask a lot these days, and I, I've been wondering about that. I guess, do you feel the same way? Yeah, it's like an optimization everyone wants to make, especially, like, you're at home, and you know, if you don't get to see people that much, it's fun to talk to people. Yeah. So you want to yeah. play a game, you can talk to your friends. And... Yeah. You're good at this, man. <laughs> yeah, have you been doing a lot of, you know, voice chat in games? I know you're always solo queuing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> funny enough, right? Like, my... my um my go-to ritual these days, right? Um, I don't know, should I say the full ritual? Maybe I'll say it, but I'm in California. But, yeah. <laughs> but you know, as soon as like, I'm done I think with they work, know by already. I know, I right? I was like, if you don't know by now, sorry, right? Sorry, Pop, sorry, Mom, sorry, I smoke, <laughs> right? <laughs> but you know, like as soon as it's six o'clock or I'm done work, smoke, turn on PS4, Overwatch, and then turn on the music. And I just, I don't even talk to people when I play Overwatch. I can't like legit. Like I, I feel just like I got. I don't know what your name is. Uh, you know, like I just I don't like listening to people. I, I I just listen to music and play the game, and I feel like a savant. I feel a wonderful, uh, and that's been my thing. Yeah, a lot well, of reason that I like games, maybe you too, is mm-hmm. that you want to feel good at something. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of sad to say, but you know what? Like, I'm so prove- happy you. Bro, bro. All right. Uh, this is something I was thinking about. Um, I was thinking about like with Dark Souls, right? It's like, why do I yeah. like, why do I like platinuming games and like playing Dark Souls and like challenging games, right? Why do I do this, right? But I find a giant pride in being able to find mastery with these games, even like games like Overwatch, where like I might, I won't be the best ever for sure, not right. Uh, I'm really proud. I mean, say, I bet with you with Dota, right? Like, where it's like, you're good at it but you know be the best ever no right but there's there's yeah, a value in go doing it yeah right. exactly right but there's a value mm-hmm. in in the in devoting time into these things it doesn't really feel like a waste of time at least i don't think so right i think so it's like whenever i win i feel like there's a buff i get in dota or it's <laughs> like in real life uh-huh. i feel good you I feel, feel good like, right you know, I did something that was worthwhile even yeah. though it may not be 100 percent like in real life worthwhile yeah exactly i think internally it feels good yeah, and exactly. Being good at something, you know, anything really, and being able to practice it whenever yeah. is such a, a luxury. Yeah, I'm glad we we had it. Man, all right. I'm like, should I? There's something else I want to say, but like, I'm like, should I say it? Mm-hmm. Maybe you know what? I'm I'm gonna try something. Also, I do want to try something with you. I'm I'm a after we finish this episode, I want to do like a Patreon clip like i want to do like an extra clip uh like just like a little bit extra talk of just like the more real shit you know like the things that always happens usually every time like i do this podcast and you you know how this goes we stop the podcast and we keep talking some more and i'm like damn i wish i recorded that bit right i think i'm gonna do that i think i'm gonna do that in the future like it happened like actually like the the last four episodes like where like i stopped talking with somebody and then we talked like 30 more minutes and it was just like i was like oh that was golden but yeah, there is something stuff. I do want to tell you about, like with this trip, <laughs> like like on like this whole last week I was back in Dallas. Mm-hmm. I do want to talk about that. So, but I'm okay. like, hold on, let me let me let me save that for for extra, right? But but back to the, like the mastery stuff, like I, I for sure to get into platinum is mastery, right? Like that is mm-hmm. like you did everything, all the bonus crap that like was in the game, you did it, right? I mean, although like there's DLC usually, right? But you did it and like you did like the most challenging things i'm actually planning to do the platinum for xcom too like nice. yeah like i like i feel like okay i'm down to do this game like multiple runs like let's do it five five runs right and then, yeah are yeah. you gonna like it i, think I, I love honestly like replayable yeah. i'm so hype although i'm so scared for for um for, for, <laughs> oh absolutely yeah right like it's like how do i feel but it's like because of this mastery i really do feel like i become more skilled as a human being you know i don't really feel like this yeah. is ever a waste of time i felt like one either got great stories two i mean just even thinking about like how long it took to do some of the mastery some things for example yakuza when i had platinum yakuza zero right um i, had, I learned how to play mahjong you know like yeah. literally like a the real life like, skill the real life game mahjong I, I learned how to play a lot of uh games of chance for sure you know like just uh, like poker to um 
shogi i learned how to play some shogi you know like it was japanese chess right but then also like i had a great time like i saw like everything that this game had to offer really you know like and it was such a wonderful experience and i think like i love seeing what the game has to offer why you know like i don't think like finishing the game is enough most times you know it's like why not go see what the extra boss is why not go see every inch of this place right i uh, one of my the hardest ones I ever did was uh, finding all the pigeons in Grand Theft Auto 4. And I remember the last one I had to go find was on top of a Ferris wheel. And it was stupid. I had to go through the whole list three and a half times, but still very memorable. Or what you about to say something though? Um, I don't remember now. No, I think it good. was like about how, you know, there's a defined goal. Yeah. Like where I'm going to get this trophy. Yes. And mm-hmm. there's not a lot of times in life where there is that, clear goal yeah Ooh. where you can you finish something and you're done and you're like, I like okay, that it's been achieved i like that man that's 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 i think that's a very good point and i think it's it's good to have that you know like like it's sort of like a controlled goal like where you see where the mountain top is right and maybe right. You don't know like how it's gonna go but you like it is all just 100 percent your time and effort in this right and luck yeah. for sure but like if you do like put the time into it, you can reach that mountain goal, right? And right. I think there's something wonderful about that. I I, I in fact, um one guest, one guy I do want to bring on the podcast, Leon. Leon Kiro, right? Great friend yeah. of mine. I love him. You know how many plat okay, so I have thirty platinums, right? Which is a lot, right? You know how many he has? He has how many? I should guess. I want you to guess the number. Uh fifty? No. More. Eighty? More. A hundred and fifty? <laughs> I think he has 140. How many games are there that have platinum? I know, really? like, there's like a lot of games have pl- uh, platinums, but like, uh, I think he has 140. Man, bro, I, I'm so like, like, just like in awe of that. For me, it's like that's mastery of these games, and then he has his own like professional life that's like going off, and I'm like, wow, that's mm-hmm. that's so impressive. I definitely yeah. gotta talk to him about that. But it, it also for me, it shows like you you devoted a time to go in depth with this, you know, all the way, you know, I, th- yeah. I think that's something about mastery that like, I, I really admire, you know? And yeah, I, I think that's one I think respect. about you with dark souls. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but like, oh, yeah, yeah. like I think about you with dark souls and just like how you mastered it. Like, whereas like, you don't care what you wear, what's what enemies <laughs> right there was where we're at. In fact, you actually have like a encyclopedic knowledge of what's in the game. Yeah, that's something that I've been trying to work with you on. I don't know if we talked about it on the podcast. <laughs> Go like ahead. Memorizing stuff. You know, I, I think, was thinking about that. I was like, I'm not as lost. I'm 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 remembering yeah. places, right? Hey. Yeah. Hey, there you go. Like if you have this map, if you can walk through it in your head, then like you just become smarter. Like your brain just expands by like, you know, one <laughs> percent. <laughs> yeah, honestly. One percent. Yeah, right. Like it, for it every is getting more wrinkles. Game layout you memorize. That's a good point, actually. I do feel like, okay, yeah, there's this landmark right here. Okay, I need to go here. I mean, oftentimes getting lost, but at the same time, there there has been like a sort of joy. Like this game, I feel like it's the true game for like stoics, you know, people who enjoy the pain and like enjoy the growth and enjoy like whatever struggle is coming. But then again, like the funny thing is like you and Zlatan like enjoy this game so much more. Like, whereas, like, I'm like, oh, it, it, like, for it, like, you guys are like marathon runners to me. Whereas, like, okay, I'm a weekend runner. Where I'm like, okay, I can run like six miles and I'm like, good. Right. Whereas, I see you guys I, as like enjoying, like, okay, 18 miles, let's go. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I think even compared to Dark Souls, there's like, there's more hardcore games, I'm sure. Wow. I don't know, I, like, what they are, but you know how people do like the warrior runs and stuff. Yeah. Like, I think compared to a marathon runner, that might be, you know, way harder yeah so that's a good point you know even if you look at maybe this is a a little bit too abstract but in music you think about like an underground rapper Mm -hmm. like there's probably way more underground ones that are that nobody knows of true that are could be always gets deeper yeah so i mean i'm sure there's like video game fans that could be listening that are like oh dark souls is nothing that's like entry level (laughs) i know right (laughs) i know right but the other 98 percent of people right (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah right it's like such a baffling game you know but you know one thing because have you played fall guys also yeah okay yeah, i played the beta okay well you know i think if you play if you played it i think you would actually mm-hmm. have an easy time because i think there's a lot of game sense you know just knowing oh, yeah. how to move and jump at the right time 
mm-hmm. boom, like you got the game, right? And it, it sort of like I, I showed my roommates the game, right? And they don't play games as much. And it, it's sort of interesting to see them do it, but I do like seeing them play. But then also when I play, you know, because I just go through it so many times, I'm actually trying to platinum that game too. But that oh, one's nice. that one's hard to platinum. I don't I don't know it's if it's competitive too. Like yeah. 100%. There's no it's all player. it's all one on, online. So one of the trophies is you have to to get uh you have to win five games in a row. But you know it's it's really stupid hard. I've done two times in a row. So and you always get like one guy to ruin everything. Something bastard. You get some, a hacker or something. Something bastard is to grabbed. happen. That's yeah. the fun part is grabbing people. Oh, <laughs> funny. You know, I, I like how you said that. Like, also, I think about morality in video games too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget Ape. <laughs> I always keep bringing it up. <laughs> like it, like you know, the funny thing. Kane also is like grab people. I'm like, no, you gotta have honor. <laughs> Do it. No. <laughs> oh, I hate. I can't. Like, I, I'm. I'm always trying to be a good good boy for some reason i don't know why <laughs> and then it makes me think about like how i played um knights of the old republic mm-hmm. exactly the same way twice because i was like oh okay i'm i'm gonna play the first way the, the way i want and the second time i was like okay i want to see what the evil side's like but i was like no i can't i can't do that so i played exactly <laughs> the same way but i had such I think- a great time i didn't mind yeah it's not so bad in that game because the evil it's not like real evil it's like your friend comes to you for advice and the good option is to help him and the bad option is like just give him the finger and you're like, what would I do that I to would, my Chewbacca uh, friend? <laughs> what would I do? Right, it's exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not like you told him to do the bad thing. You like you just a jerk for some reason. I'm like, no. Yeah, exactly. I don't, it was like so I, But my Chewbacca friend's just <laughs> so nice to me. He doesn't understand sarcasm. <laughs> he goes, you know, it's like, oh, I feel so I bad. I wouldn't, no. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. And the sad beeps from the droids. <laughs> yeah, right. Just like kick him for no reason. It's like, oh, you're a Sith Lord now. You're I get, super creep. I got lightning powers, but what cost, right? <laughs> Nobody <laughs> likes me. Cost. <laughs> yeah like i was like oh the powers are cool but and also like would you play knights of the old republic but like not be a jedi in fact actually like that's a good point like would you be in a star wars universe and not be a jedi i think now i would i think you know some of my favorite characters and yeah, they're always the coolest games. guys yeah yeah it was like the people that you know just normal people i think maybe there's is that a boy spoiler i don't know if i i don't know enough, enough about the show but i think <laughs> In like an exceptional universe, the the normal people are. I you know, love how the they real... did it in the boys. Like, I I hope this is not like a spoiler to sort of say, but like, uh, yeah, it's about normal people versus the 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 superior apparently, right? And then like how they go about that, and it feels like Venture Brothers plus um what else is it like I, I had the perfect analogy but like a is venture like reverse x-men kind of yeah yeah it's, it's 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 reverse x-men yeah for sure honestly like if the mutants like had the power but but it's like uh, there was like another like amc show that maybe i'm just thinking about like one of the characters but um it feels like venture brothers plus mm, Mad Men, okay, yeah, I don't know. Plus Black Mirror, it, it, it's it's pretty dope. I like it a lot. Now nah, Black Mirror it. is sort of weird to say, but like it, it, I, I think it's like a, a a higher tier um live action show. Yeah, and I just think like live action shows these days are are really killing it. Yeah, I I need to watch more. I think I need to compromise on my efficiency a bit. <laughs> I, I I had to do the same thing too. Like for me, like I felt bad about sometimes just like stopping to watch a show mm-hmm. but i think like some of these shows are really worth it i finished Watchmen recently um oh, yeah how is that compared to the, the movie you're grabbing the real good real good it's like same it, story or it's a different universe the, it's same universe and it keeps on going so mm-hmm. yeah and i think they did a very good job about it and um i really liked it. I don't know, that's probably bad to say no no i know, I know, I know what, what you mean is in the <laughs> you know if you liked him then i think you'll enjoy this one quite a bit so okay. yeah because I, I read the the graphic novel yes and as part of that class that i keep talking yeah. about mm-hmm. and i was just like wow like this was such a good guy move this guy was willing to become the bad guy <laughs> yeah, you know what actually that's a good point like you need to watch the show and then let's talk like i would like to talk to you about it for sure yeah because okay. cool. there's there's quite a bit 
in Watchmen, the show where I was like, whoa, like it helped me understand the the comic more. And then because yeah. it follows the comic timeline. Um, and I think it did a really good job of modernizing it, too. Yeah. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. And then I love the main character, like, but like, I, I definitely can't wait for you to hear your take on it. And then also watch some anime, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a list of stuff I still yeah. want to watch. Well, what would you uh, watch? Like, if you just watch one, like, watch one the next and for the next time, um, you know, where it's just being podcast between me and you. What would you watch? I think uh, the medieval one is Vinland Saga. Vinland right? Saga. Okay. I think, okay. I, I think I just decided on that one. I like that. I, th- I think. I think uh, you will enjoy that quite a bit. I hope so. Yeah, I've been playing more Mountain Blade. I know. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> exactly. Keep it, nice. It, okay. It's another one of those games where you know you're the main character, but you can still take a you know error to the face like anyone else. It is <laughs> die. That's pretty cool. Like, like how it, you're equalitarian permanent. like that. Like, okay. like you can just get a spear to the neck and you're just gone. Like the game's over. And your companions too. Like you spend all this time investing in them, and they can just die in battle. Wow! It's like I guess it makes sense. But I need to. I think that would hurt me a lot. But I need to get to that point. Maybe I need to do the Iron Man mode in XCOM. You know. Oh yeah, Iron Man uh, is high stakes. <laughs> it just feels better. It feels you know, like you're. Uh, that mode excites me. So to so explain, like what Iron Man mode is, um, like it saves after every move, right? Yeah. So, so you can't, no and it's only one save, anymore. right? Yeah. You can't, right. you can't like save and reload. It's like, okay, you did a move, it saved, and then Stop. that's it. <laughs> yeah. And all that's... decisions are final. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've done nothing but save scum. I think I, I'm trying not to save scum too much, but whenever something bad goes down, like I'm just like, I gotta, I, I can't accept that, you know, but I'm trying to just be like, okay, this is what it is. I messed up, live with the consequences, huh? I think you you get better at the game. Yeah, that's the what I'm hoping. Is hurt, that's, you know. Yeah, that's a good point because I'm gonna be playing this on um, hard mode, so I can get that trophy. But like, so right now I'm doing it hard mode, so I can do it the first time. Then I'm gonna go through the extreme mode, right? So I can like understand what that is. But I'm gonna go balls to walls, like just like buy everything I can, do everything I can, right? Mm-hmm. And then I'm gonna do it third time hard mode, the Iron Man mode. I should stream this. No, I can't. Yeah. Wait, can I? Yeah, I can stream this. Yeah. I should stream this. Do it. I think, like, if anything, it's an archive for you to. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, just to like see like how how things were, huh? Yeah. Man, this is a good episode, man. I I like it, it, time really went fast. I sort of did Kanye, and I was just sort of like idea, idea, idea. But you know, I always like talking to you. I'm just sort of like, oh my god, Sam's here. I, I just want to talk about more things, you know? Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Dope. we gotta do more often i, think. I would definitely it's please good, like to process current events honestly I like, I, I like the way that you think too like it's a very rational and logical way where i'm like but also very empathetic too like where it's like and i like that you're like equalitarian too like you're really like equalitarian for me i think i low-key have a feeling like well i'm better than this guy yeah, yeah. Dude, i remember <laughs> we had like we actually we didn't have a fight yeah we, we no, i remember the argument in the car we're arguing we, we over the home. nature of humans yeah exactly <laughs> the nature of man yeah like, very much so I, 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 like, it was a great argument and i was like wow but it did change like how i thought about you like where i'm like wow you really are about the people maybe i'm not about the people as much as i thought i was but i love people but i feel like there's there's levels to it in a way and then but based on like morality and such like it's weird whereas you were like no everyone has a chance and like for real for real though right and whereas i see you as like top tier it's you're like no i'm gonna use these powers for good and i'm just sort of like wow you you're saying because i'm <laughs> yeah, I think, you know yeah. it, it's a fun discussion to have it's like a whole episode word it was honestly like and yeah. we'll have more of this conversation soon though no, honestly, definitely. I would love for you to be on the podcast more. I'm gonna invite you when I have guests and such on, uh, you know, so we can be homies and all again. Um, it's wonderful having you back on the podcast, and yeah. you know, definitely hope to see you a lot more. Yeah. Um, I guess anything that you'd like to say? Any last things? Uh... Um, not really. Yeah. <laughs> I have think that's safe, a good way. Have a good time. Yeah. If you don't want to vote, you don't have to. Wow. It's, it's optional. You. Good on you. Vote See, that, dude. <laughs> for me, I'm like, go vote. Be a good man. And you know who? I'm gonna say, vote for Biden. 
Don't get taken. Don't vote for, for whoever your conscience is. No. Like, <laughs> have you not heard my your podcast? Conscience? If your conscience says Trump, we gotta talk. Actually, I probably that should be like who I bring in next. I should probably bring in a Trump supporter. Maybe after the after the election. <laughs> I don't know if I if I if I maybe I'll, if I bring in a Trump supporter before the election, you gotta be there to calm it down, all right? Maybe you moderator. moderator exactly, right? Because <laughs> I'll be like, well, let's let's just uh, I'll just want to talk, all right? But uh, I do legit want to talk to whoever has an opposing view, and I do want to respect whoever has opposing views, you know. And hopefully, like there is something we can learn from each other, each other. Yeah, yeah but, there's, um, there's a lot of common ground. I think the current climate makes it really, uh, really tough. It zooms in on the stuff that's slightly different when it's not really that uncommon. You You're a good man, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> you too. Yeah. Thank you. I try. <laughs> Uh, otherwise, uh, all what I want to say is go vote for Biden. Um, stay safe. Wear a mask. Um, anything else? Thanks for listening to the podcast. If you listen to the very end, I appreciate you. Love to hear from you. Um, you know, thanks for following the podcast. You know, we're 62 episodes, 61 episodes in now. Yeah. And honestly, I only have plans to keep on going more. So, woo. And yeah, thank you, Sam. Definitely appreciate you. And to everyone out there, uh, stay safe, be dope. Peace. Peace.